Welcome back to History of Simple Things. Today's topic comes from one of our viewers, Robert Greenland. Great pick. You asked, how is Monal made and what's so special about it? If you've ever worked in marine engineering, chemical plants, or vintage aviation, chances are you've come across Monal. It's a metal that resists corrosion like a champ, holds its strength in extreme conditions, and somehow still manages to look stylish while doing it. But where did this mystery metal come from, and how is it actually produced? Stick around as we trace the fascinating journey of Monal, from raw nickel to one of the toughest alloys on the planet, right here on History of Simple Things. First things first, what even is Monel? It's not a pure metal like iron or copper. Monel is actually a trademark name for a group of nickel-based alloys. The most common version, Monel 400, is made up of roughly 67% nickel and 30% copper, with the remaining two, 3% made up of iron, manganese, carbon, and sometimes silicon. The result is a metal that's highly resistant to corrosion, incredibly tough, and surprisingly malleable given its strength. It can be rolled, forged, or even welded, something that's not always easy with nickel-heavy metals. It's these qualities that make Monel perfect for demanding industries like marine engineering, aerospace, and chemical processing. Before we get into how Monel is made, let's rewind just a bit. The alloy is named after Ambrose Monel, a metallurgist and executive at the International Nickel Company, also known as INCO. Back in 1901, INCO patented this new alloy. Though interestingly, the final product dropped one L from his last name for trademark reasons. At the time, Monel was revolutionary. Steel was still struggling with rust, and aluminum hadn't yet taken off. Here was a metal that could laugh in the face of salt water, high temperatures, and acids. It was strong but workable, and it didn't degrade like many of its competitors. During the early 20th century, it found its way into everything from propeller shafts to household sinks. Yes, someone once thought it was a good idea to make kitchen sinks out of Monel. That's how versatile and admired it was. All right, now let's get into the actual making of Monel. Like all alloys, it starts with raw materials. The two major ingredients here are nickel and copper. Nickel is usually mined from laterite or sulfide ores. Some of the biggest nickel mines are in places like Canada, Indonesia, and Russia. Copper, on the other hand, is more globally sourced and is often extracted from porphyry deposits. These ores are mined, crushed, and refined until you get relatively pure forms of nickel and copper metals, often in the form of cathodes or briquettes. Other elements like iron, manganese, and carbon are usually added in small quantities later in the process, depending on the specific Monel grade being produced. Once the raw materials are gathered, it's time for them to come together in one very hot, very intense process, melting. The nickel and copper are weighed out in precise proportions and loaded into a furnace, typically an electric arc furnace or an induction furnace, depending on the scale and quality requirements. These furnaces can reach temperatures of over 1,400 degrees Celsius, which is more than enough to melt both metals and blend them into a uniform liquid alloy. At this stage, the smaller additives, iron, manganese, and others, are introduced to tweak the final properties of the model. At this stage, the smaller additives, iron, manganese, and others, are introduced to tweak the final properties of the Monel. Metallurgists keep a close eye on the composition, using techniques like optical emission spectroscopy to ensure everything's just right. Even a tiny bit too much of one element can mess with Monel's unique characteristics. Once the alloy is fully melted and blended, it's poured into molds in a process called casting. These molds can be shaped into ingots, billets, or slabs, depending on the intended use. 
The cooling process is critical here. If the metal cools too quickly or unevenly, it can develop internal stresses or defects that will be a problem later. Monel is known for its toughness, but it still needs to be treated carefully during this phase to preserve its integrity. Once solidified, the raw cast Monel is removed from the mold and sent on to the next stages of shaping and treatment. After casting, the metal is still in a pretty rough state. It's solid, but it's not exactly usable yet. So the next step is hot working, where those cast forms are reheated and then rolled, forged, or extruded into more refined shapes. Rolling mills might flatten Monel slabs into sheets or coils, while forging operations might shape it into bars or custom components. This stage is where Monel's ductility really shines. It can be shaped under high pressure without cracking or breaking. This flexibility makes it ideal for everything from pipes and tubes to fasteners and heat exchangers. Once formed, the metal often undergoes additional treatments, such as annealing, to relieve internal stresses and improve its mechanical properties. After Monel has been formed into its final shape, it usually goes through some additional finishing processes to get it ready for real-world use. This might include surface treatments like pickling or polishing, depending on where the metal is going. If it's being used in chemical processing equipment, it may need to meet very strict purity and cleanliness standards. For marine or aerospace applications, it might be subjected to non-destructive testing like ultrasonic or X-ray inspections to check for hidden flaws. Monal is also known for being weldable, but welding nickel-based alloys takes skill, so any final assembly or joining must be done by trained technicians using specialized techniques like gas tungsten arc welding. Once everything checks out, the Monal is ready to ship out and start its long life in harsh environments. Monel is one of those materials that engineers trust when everything else might fail. In salt water, no problem. In acidic environments, still good. Under high pressure and heat, it holds up. That kind of resilience doesn't come cheap, which is why Monel is usually reserved for mission-critical parts where failure simply isn't an option. Think oil rigs, desalination plants, deep sea valves, and heat exchangers. Even some musical instruments use Monel for valve pistons and tubing, because nothing says durable like a trumpet that can survive a marching band, the rain, and a drop from the bleachers. Monel might not be flashy, but it's definitely a behind-the-scenes hero in the world of materials science. It's a perfect example of how metallurgy combines art and science to create something incredibly useful something that can survive in the places most metals simply can't. The next time you're near the ocean, flying in a plane or walking through an industrial plant, chances are there's a piece of monal nearby quietly doing its job. And now you know exactly how it got there, from raw ore to refined resilience. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.